Okay, now this autumn, sort of early autumn on K1, they have what they call every year the bubbler season, uh, and all the fish hit the silt, fizz all over the place. And I was struggling, to be honest, to get a bite, just chasing them with singles and spooking them more than anything. So I came up with a little PVC, well I say I came up with, I spoke to a mate of mine, Nick Bullwood, and he told me about a little PVA bag rig he uses. And I made a couple of little adaptations to it and gave it a try. First cast of it, I had a 42 pounder, I think it was, and I thought, oh, I'm sold on this. Um, and throughout the autumn, I have caught so many fish with it. The I think the noise of the PVA bag in the surface is different to a lead pounding in and the way it hits the bottom. And just the presentation you get, it's just a one bite wonder. Every time you chuck it out, you've got a little trap, little pile of pellets, little wafter on top. It just works perfectly. So what I'm gonna do is run you through the components and exactly how I put it together. Okay, first component, a leader. <coughs> I'm using a soft sort of polyurethane coated leader here. It's not essential which leader you use. You use lead core or whatever pre-bought leaders. Um, just remove any bits they might come with. Quite often they come with a swivel attached or a clip swivel or whatever. Just get a little pair of snippers, take them off so you've <coughs> got yourself a naked leader with a little fuse loop on each end. Next up, we have the covert PVA bag swivels. Um, different to normal swivels. They've got a little clip on the end um, that takes the PVA knot, but you'll see that in a minute. Okay, there's your little swivel with your PVA bag clip on the end. And you simply go through, loop that on to the swivel end, not the clip, the swivel end. So push your loop through, like so. Open your loop out, like so and push your clip and swivel all the way back through. Like so. So next up, we have a rubber bead. Now you need a large bead for this. I think this one is eight mil, which is probably about the smallest you want to go to. The idea is that it doesn't plug in the bottom of an inline lead, but we'll get to that in a minute. But if you go with about eight mil, you can't go wrong. Large, fairly soft rubber, be rubber bead. Now you're gonna to have to thread this on with a baiting needle um, because it's quite hard to push the end of the leader through it. So just slide it onto a baiting needle Take the other end of the leader, it's got nothing on it. Hook it on. I use these gate latch ones, much easier. Doesn't get stuck in the middle of the bead. There we go. And slide him all the way down and push that right over the end of the swivel that your leader's looped onto. Pull him on there nice and tight. All these stages are things you're only ever going to only ever going to have to do once and there we go your PVA clip your leader and your stop bead okay next up is the lead now this is quite a crucial part of it I use these inline you need an inline lead I'm using an inline lead with flat sides but the most important thing is it's got a soft rubber insert, not a hard rubber insert. If you've only got leads with hard rubber insert, with hard sort of plastic inserts, you can buy these separately, these sort of extended soft rubbers. It's got to be a soft rubber. And then you need to pull that out of the lead. Take it out totally. You might need to pull it out with a baiting needle. There she comes, there you go. So just put your lid down for a moment and there's your soft rubber insert. Now you're actually discarding this, but you're saving a very small part of it. And this, for the safety of the rig, is quite crucial. You're getting a pair of scissors and you're cutting off a small washer off of the end of it small amount off the end 
and that's the bit you're saving. So don't let that ping off. This is the bit you're discarding. You only need the little washer at the end. And that doesn't want to be any more than about, what would that be? About two and a half mil, two to two and a half mil. If it's too big, it gets stuck inside the lead. So it's just a little washer you're creating there. Just make sure you don't lose it. There you go. Discard that piece and you keep your tiny little washer. Now that tiny little washer plugs back. I always wet it. It's going to be wet when it's in the lake, obviously, but I wet it when it goes in as well. That plugs in the back in the end of the lead where it came from. So now that's all you've got is that little washer and that will become apparent why that's so crucial in a minute. Okay, so now you've got your, your lead and your washer and that's now going next on the line. Again, it is everything's easier with a baiting needle. There we go, that's sliding all the way down and hitting the big rubber bead. And you can see now why I said about a large rubber bead, <coughs> you don't want it to plug into that recess at the bottom. It's actually a sliding lead. So it can hit up against that bead, but the bead can't get caught in the little hole at the bottom of the lead where your washer is. Okay, next item on the agenda is I use the Covert Tungsten Sinkers. Um, this is acting as a backstop. Now, the most crucial part about this is the size of the backstop you use needs to pass through the inline lead. These come on a little handy threading tool, but what I'm going to do, once again, take my little needle, put that in the end of the wire loop, and transfer one of them on to my baiting needle. Like so, just managed to stab myself in the finger. That's not recommended, but there you go. So it's on your baiting needle. Get your open loop end of your leader, transfer it back onto there. A little bit of moisture it helps it slide down and not roll up. And you want to set that about, it's not crucial, let's say about four or five inches back from your lead. Right, that's your main part constructed. So you've got your backstop, your sliding lead, you've got your little washer, which just pokes in there, not hard, just touches in there. Don't ram it in. And that sits against your bead and now all you need is your hook link. Now I'll show you before I put the hook link on how this actually works. So when you've got your hook link on and you get a bite the lead is running back up the line, the little stop disappears inside the lead like so and when it hits the washer that's just enough to set the hook and if need be, it can plop that washer out of the lead and then your lead's free to slide up the line and away should you ever break, crack off or whatever. So it's a totally safe rig as long as the lead can slide right up over the backstop and the little washer. Okay, right, I am gonna need glasses for this bit. This is the rig tying, which is always a challenge at my age. Okay, I've got here some Gardner Tricks to Heavy Camo in silk. Doesn't really matter which color, whichever you prefer, but I do like the dark one. This is a bare braid, an uncoated braid. Chop yourself off a short length for that. Like so. Chop yourself about a foot of it there or whatever that is. Into one side and I've got a size six mugger. Can't go wrong with a size six mugger. You size six muggers for so many fishing applications. Sharp, got the perfect little curve. Strong, bloody lovely hook. 
tie yourself a loop on the end of your bit of braid. Again, just do an overhand and get me. I don't know what I do without these. Get used for everything. Through the loop, hook the bit you just made, gate closes, bosh. Simple little loop maker. Trim off the tag end. Like so. Then I get a very small diameter piece of tubing which is going to sit tight onto the shank of the hook. So that's the best way of describing it. I'm cutting myself off about three millimeters. This is just to hold the hair in place on the shank. And that slides on next. The most challenging part probably is getting it through that tubing. But we've done it in one. There we go. We slide that down near to the loop. Like so. So then, you take your braid, come through the back to the front. Like so. And then you want to pop your little sleeve over the point of the hook from the opposite side to the loop. So you come in the opposite side of the loop, pop the point through there, slide in around the bend, straighten everything up, try not to hook through the braid, tighten them up like that. You can just pull that hair to whatever length you like. If you want a longer hair, you just pull it through. So you set that roughly at the length that you're going to want your hair to be when your rig is finished. So I'm going to want it about there for a 15 mil bait. Put your sleeve down just below or just level with the point of the hook. And then a simple no knot. You'll know how to do one of them. Just go around four or five times with the braid and back through from the back to the front of the eye and there you go simple as that now I find the easiest way because I don't want a long hook link with this because I'm using a little PVA bag and I want to tuck it in the PVA bag so I find the easiest way is to do a loop on this end no, I'm going for whatever that is, about four to five inches of hook link. Do a little overhand loop on the end. Again, <laughs> the magic tool. Through, hook and back. Cut the tag end off. And we're sorted. Lovely little nicely tied hook link. Now the hook link is the only part you should ever really have to change on this rig. Although it may have taken you a little while to get to this stage, all of this section stays as it is. The only thing you're ever going to change is the hook link. So once you've got your rig, it's nice and easy. Now, if you look at your PVA bag swivel, ignore the, the clip, little pear-shaped clip, you're looping through the actual eye of the swivel. Loop through there. Hook, hair and everything else back through the loop like so pull it tight job done and there we go he's ready for a hook bait and a bag and pop nugget in first half a nugget 
little handful of pellets. Now I'm filling about halfway up the tube, I reckon. Yeah, halfway. Slide him off. And before you knot it off, you just want to compress it a few times. Get it nice and tight. Make sure you haven't got a one pellet stuck in the tube because that will get in the way of your knot. Spin that off and tie a knot in the end. Actually, that is the end of that tube, so we can just pull that off. So a little knot in the end, tease that down, keeping that nice and tight. Boom. And then cut, when you cut it, leave yourself a little tag, cut it at an angle as well, help it go through. Lose the bit at the PVA end. And there you have your bag. A little tag at this end, you've got the PVA visible at the other end. Bag done. Okay, now, need a hook bait. I use a wafter, don't really want to pop up because you don't want it standing up above the bag. So a little wafter works perfectly. Got a little dark fish meal one here to match the dark fish meal pellets I'm using. And the handy baiting tool again. Pop that on your hair with a little stop. bait stop and we're ready to go now the <coughs> the beauty of this rig is the ease of changing the PVA bag. I know it's taken a while to get to this stage but like I've explained already once you've got that you've got that and that stays the same and you can have as many of these tied up as you like so you'll be at this stage when you're ready to fish bucket full of these and you simply wet the end of your tag spin him round make sure that your clip is hanging skinny circle down fat circle up like so you poke your tag through the fat circle Grab it the other side, pull your knot through the fat circle and slide it down to the narrow end. And that is it. Then all you have to do is stab your hook through the bag into the PVA nugget, just lightly. And it's that easy to change a bag. And there he is, the finished rig, bag hook held nice and secure into the nugget. Easy change. As the fish picks it up, it slides back until it hits the stop. The stop gives it just enough dunk to set the hook. And away you go, fish on. And should, for some reason, you break your main line, that stop will take that collar out the back there like that, and your lead will be free to come straight up and away and gone.